The Brian and Kenzie Show. On Q101. Time for a fact that makes your brain just go. Now, 13% of men do this in public bathrooms only. Not their own bathroom, not a neighbor's bathroom, or your friend's house for a party. They do this in that bathroom. A lot of good guesses came through. Talk to other dudes. I do that in our bathroom. I can't stop not, like, small talk in the bathroom if someone else is in there. If it's too quiet, it just gets weird, you know? Well, of course more people... You talk to other people. Well, no one's... Yeah, but women go into a stall. Like, men are at the urinal, and you're just kind of standing there next to somebody. And sometimes men don't... There's, you don't know this, but a lot of men don't like to talk in there. They just keep quiet, look straight ahead, like they're in the military all of a sudden. I would okay. say most men prefer that. See, cases like that. Case goes to another floor to I go to the bathroom. I talk every time. I talk all the time. I know. I knew you would do that. Case goes up to the 17th floor to go to the bathroom because he wants... There's no one up there. We used to own that floor, and there's just nothing up there now. Yeah. And he goes there to go to the bathroom because he doesn't want to talk to anybody. I know. I'm also very pee shy. He's pee shy. <laughs> it just, I don't know. There's a lot of people in this building I really respect and that I like and that I'm friends with, and I don't... I don't want to see them peeing. I don't want them to see me peeing. It is a weird thing that we expect guys to just all see each other's penises in public. Thank you, Kenzie. This is what I've been saying. It is odd, because, like, I don't know why that's a thing. Especially, like, at Wrigley. I don't know, but I've heard there's a trough. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And I don't, like, there's just nothing. Like, there's not even the little side thing of the urinal. I love that statement. Because being the diehard Cubs fan that you are all the way through... And the trough is legendary in the men's bathroom. (laughs) And it's terrifying, but you have to do it during a game. Now, there's other urinals around it. You can maybe go go in the stall. But you have to go to the trough when the game's going on because so many people. Yeah. And I don't know who invented the trough. I don't like it. But you have to do it. And you're you're right next to someone. Like, it's... Can I tell you something crazy? Yes. When I saw Morgan Wallen at Wrigley Field... (laughs) <laughs> I know. You're not even ready for what I'm about to say. I, I, I just You're not going, ready for this I know medicine. it's going somewhere good. My husband, Roman, came back from going to the bathroom and was like, there are women sitting on the trough using the bathroom. They're sitting on it. Mm. Now, I'm having a hard time imagining that because I haven't gone in there to know what the trough looks like, but that sounds disgusting. It's, I imagine like sitting on a urinal would be gross. Okay. I've seen this before. You've seen it happen? <laughs> I've seen it happen as well, with your, like your husband did. Oh, my God. Because, the, you know, obviously women's bathrooms back up way farther than men's yeah. bathrooms to keep it moving. Now, well, But the trough, to sit on it? The trough looks exactly like you think it looks like. Like a medical sink. It's oh, a steel okay. medical sink that's just longer, not deep, but it's longer. But it's not deep. So it's not, a, <laughs> it's not that deep. It bothers me. <laughs> but... To your point on a urinal, it'd be grosser to sit in a urinal for a woman. It would be. Because I think you can you can squat over the But the you could thing. fall into the trough. You could. This is where teamwork comes in. There's no way they're hold, in there keeping great balance if this decision's being made. You've got to hold their hands like it's a seventh grade dance where you're, you're far Have apart. Have you helped women sit on the trough? No, I never helped a woman do that. I bet. It's a chance I helped someone. <laughs> But, yeah, it's, it's a very bold move for a woman to do that. I would be, so, I don't know, I'd be so uncomfortable. I want to get you in the men's room just when it's closed. I don't, well, I, I don't want to go. <laughs> no, I, I want you to see the trough. You I have don't. to see the trough. It's it's unbelievable. I, guess, I don't understand the concept. Yeah. I don't know who invented it to say it would save space. They didn't have to, or maybe it's cheaper than a bunch of urinals in a row. But then again, it's a billion-dollar organization. Let's get rid of the trough. There's, there's probably potential there for an MTV Cribs-like episode, but with Kinsey just exploring the men's bathroom at Wrigley. That's exactly how I envision <laughs> it. I don't, I don't think I want to be in there. Yeah. <laughs> just imagine the slow-mo and all the camera effects that Cribs use, but it's the trough at Wrigley. Like, I feel if I was left, uh, I would just be, well, I'm just going to wait in line. I don't want to go sit on the trough. <laughs> you shouldn't want to sit on the trough. Yeah, I think I just think the line, waiting in the line would be better. You're fine. You're 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 on point with the right thoughts. I will get to this fact what 13% of men do in public bathrooms that they don't do in their own. But there's one more thing I want to mention because you brought this up. There's a bar in Tinley Park that I cannot remember the name of that has stalls for urinals. Case. So meaning you open a door to walk case. in and it's well because Case doesn't like to pee in front of other men. Yep. It's a stall with a door for a urinal. Well that's all I that's all I've ever asked for. Not Hold for on, the, let not, me look this up. Tinley Park Bar. I, I wanna say it could be an Irish pub down there. If people know, please text me at 312-591-8300. I'll give a hint, because the urinals were kegs that were cut out, which looked really cool. So the urinals like a, a keg of beer, they cut it in half, and then that was the urinal. 
So if anybody knows that bar. It doesn't sound sanitary. No, it looked really cool, though. Okay, it was very right. clean. It was all very right. clean. The bar was amazing. The food was great. And they had stall doors for urinals. I would love that. I also just, the I could go my whole life without ever seeing a urinal again. I wouldn't miss them. The expense must have been unbelievable. Well, no expense is spared for a comfortable pee. Facts. I know. There's no one writing an article about this. I can't find it anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> You're telling me it's not in the New York Times? Uh. <laughs> Just pulling up things, you know, that you can do in Tilly Bark. There's not a Reddit thread on this? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Yeah. This is just frustrating. Well, while you keep searching in the research, because we know you're a hound on that one, the fact is 13% of men do this in public bathrooms that they don't do in their own or anybody else's as a, of a personal bathroom. They would take a penny out of the urinal. If they saw it there. Wait, I'm confused. I thought you said the fact was that they talked to other people. No, no, I said someone, no, I said someone had guessed that on the oh, text line. I said the fact, I thought yeah. we were gone. Someone okay. had guessed that one. Someone had guessed uh, that they put toilet paper on the seat, things like that. Everybody was wrong on the text line. It is, they would take a penny out of the urinal if it was sitting there. Well, it's good luck. It's heads up. <laughs> that's right. That's what I was going to ask you, because do you ever pick up a penny that's not heads up on the ground or... Not well, in a you, I always flip it over so somebody else can have good luck. Well, that's nice. Like Mother Teresa? I always God. flip over a penny. Does that, does that make it count for luck for the next person? Absolutely. I'm paying it they forward? found a penny. Heads up. Wow. That blows my mind. I always do that. God. You, you are don't a do saint. That? You, don't, you don't flip over coins for people? No, I've been afraid to touch one heads down because I think it gives bad luck. Well, maybe that explains a lot of my life. <laughs> touching, touching the heads of pennies all over the place. <laughs> Oh, we're going to try to find this bar in Tinley Park. Kenzie's on the case, taking a deep dive. It's like no no reviews or anything about these urinals. I don't know. It's a bar in Tinley Park that has doors and stalls around the urinals. Which not I've... Cousin's Pub. <sighs> it's not ringing a so bell. You're, if, so here's the deal. If I guess the name, you're not even going to know? Cousins doesn't sound right. Uh, let me look up Cousins and see. Okay. Well, I was a little buzzed when I was there. <laughs> Maybe you just walked into the girls' bathroom. And like, Look at all these Maybe I dreamt it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, it like, exists. Get out of here. It exists. I you think don't even go here. <laughs> Brian and Kenzie in the morning, and Chicago's alternative all day. Q101. Brian and Kenzie. On Q101, our guy Gavin Rostell. We've interviewed him, and it's up on our YouTube channel, and of course. All of our podcasts, the Brian and Kenzie podcast, a great interview, really fun guy. Um, show coming up this summer in August with all the other shows. Now, this is a monumental moment. I love our listeners. I, they're so good. And Kenzie worked really hard to dig and find this bar I was talking about is the fact that made your brain go was that men would take a penny, 13% of them, out of a urinal in a public bathroom. First off, I think we should get rid of change in general. I don't want change anymore at all. But... If a penny's sitting there, it's a penny earned, I guess. A free one, good luck, what as you, you said. Throw, what are you going to throw in a, like, fountain? I'm not buying many You're fountains. you throw a dollar into a fountain. Well, that's how I roll. I throw my 20s in a fountain. <laughs> that's make it rain. What's up, Rockefeller? Yeah, it's been a well, good year. Especially if it has one of those woman statues above it. Grease, you make it rain on her. <laughs> oh. You bring up a good point. I feel like I'm not around as many fountains as I used to be. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, you know, 20 years ago, I feel like there were fountains all over the place. Well, because, Case, you go to GameStop. Like, that's what you do. Okay. There's a lot of fountains in front of GameStop. <laughs> Can you imagine if a GameStop had a fountain That'd in it? That'd be awesome. That'd <laughs> be so badass. You throw old video games in it when you walk in? <laughs> yeah, the trade-ins they won't accept. Yeah, but I want to give major props to Jason in Oak Lawn. Jason, you are the man because he came up with the bar in Tinley Park I was thinking of that had doors and a stall around urinals. I'd never seen that before. And they have kegs for the urinals. They cut off kegs. And it's very clean and nice. And the bar is amazing. The food's great. It was J.W. Holstein's in Tinley Park. Oh, I haven't been there in a minute. It was about this like two years ago when I was down there. And as far as I know, they still have it. It's on Oak Park Ave in Tinley Park. J.W. Uh, Holstein. Yeah, great bar. Wow. Really good that's, food. That's quite a name. Sounds like a used car salesman. I thought I thought it sounded like somebody who could solve crime. <laughs> yeah. J.W. Holstein's on the case. Go ahead, keep going. Well, it's like, I don't know. <laughs> oh, he got a murder? He'll solve it. <laughs> got, a mur <laughs> got a murder, he'll solve it. <laughs> I don't know. It's not oh. my genre. Okay. Uh, yeah, I don't know. She with a pipe. <laughs> <laughs> it's an amazing bar, and they do have that. I've never seen that anywhere else. People are checking in, though. They said there's some other bars around the area that do have uh, that situation where a, a stall around a urinal. Who knew? 
Uh, 219 Bill checked in and said there was, there's one in Indiana. Now I lost his, his text number. But anyway, there were some other ones out there. I, I just was fascinated by it. So go check out JW Holstein's in Tinley Park for the food, the atmosphere, the music, because they have live music, and the bathrooms. And the ba- mainly the bathrooms. Mainly the bathrooms. I've never seen that before. All right. Uh, we are just eight minutes away from 7 o'clock, where it's your chance to get to the we, When We Were Young Festival in Las Vegas. You've got My Chemical Romance. You've got uh, Fallout Boy. You've got Pierce the Veil, Jimmy Eat World, among others. 7 a.m., we will give you the word to text in. It's very easy. Just listen at 7, and your chance to win is there. Uh, now let's go, Curtis, with your headlines. This is not headline news. An ambulance in Ontario hit a moose while responding to another collision with a moose. And that's today's installment of That's So Canadian. Ben Affleck skipped the premiere of J-Lo's new movie. J-Lo acted like she wasn't upset. But as we all know, J-Lo can't act. Peloton is no longer using Diddy's music, which is a shame because we should be teaching women to pedal faster when they hear him coming. And Harry Styles and his girlfriend broke up. Now comes the tough part, deciding who gets custody of the skirts, earrings, and makeup. This is not headline news. Brian and Kenzie in the morning and Chicago's alternative all day. Q101. Brian and Kenzie in the morning and Chicago's alternative all day. Q101. Brian and Kenzie on Q101. Early takeaway from Mitchell. Uh, Don't snitch, just move. That's what Cameron said to Anderson Cooper uh, about uh, six, seven years ago in an interview about snitching. If there is a serial killer living next door to you, though, and you know that person is, you know, killing people, would you be a snitch if you t- called police and told them? If I knew the serial killer was living next door to me? Yeah. No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't call and tell anybody on them, but I'd probably move, but I'm not going to call and be like, you know, the serial killer's in 4E. <laughs> Imagine to call the police. The serial killer, he's in 4E. <laughs> you guys got to get here. You won't believe it. He's just down the hall from me, man. Go get him. Oh, man. It's Brian and Kenzie on Q101. And some, some lighter news out there that this is very shocking because we've talked a lot about Red Lobster. They've closed locations in the Chicagoland area. Two locations have closed in Northwest Burbs uh, because they've gone bankrupt because of their endless shrimp promotion. And I think a lot of people always think when they do something like that, uh, well, they've got all this money. They get the shrimp for like, you know, a penny and it, it can't hurt them. Well, they lost about $5 million, I think, on the endless shrimp promotion. And they were already probably trending a bad direction. And then it just, that just put them over the edge to file for bankruptcy. So they didn't realize it was going to be like a challenge accepted type of promotion. They just thought if you're still a little hungry, you could get some more. And this is what's interesting about that, Kenzie, because Buffalo Wild Wings now has jumped in and just announced Monday and Wednesdays, dine in only. All you can eat boneless wings and fries for nineteen ninety nine. Oh. And they put the post up and they said, "Please don't bankrupt us with the prayer emoji." So they're trying to take a shot at Red Lobster, but at the same time, I had to think about this because boneless wings are you can eat them quicker because the bone takes a little time and effort to eat the eat the chicken off of it. Uh huh. But like I a work out that way. Yeah, you don't burn a few calories eating wings, but boneless wings. I'm trying to think of how many I could eat. In a sit-down session. Because I've already made clear, one time my biggest total with two buddies, we ate 150 wings. Big ones with bone in wings. Well, bone in are more expensive, though. That's right. That's why they say they're doing this. I'm just worried about Buffalo Wild Wings. They have enough money to keep going and do this. I don't want them to follow the same path. I mean, 1999, all you can eat boneless wings. Could I eat, like, 30 boneless wings? I'm I don't trying. know why you're asking me. I don't know how to help you. Do you think I can the way you've seen me eat? I think you could eat a lot more than 30. <laughs> but then you're going to call it. Then you're going to be like, well, my feelings are hurt. So I don't know what to do with you. If I can't do 30? No, I think you're going to be like, well, it's Kenzie. I'm yeah. way for thin. <laughs> <laughs> Case, how many do you think you could eat? Mm, if you could do 30? You I, think you could do 30? I think if I was hungry, if I made a plan not to eat lunch that day, maybe like an English muffin for breakfast only to get me going, and oh, I have a whole day. English McMuffins? I know about those. Yeah, the English McMuffins, yeah. Um, I, if I had to put money down, I would say you'd eat like 65 wings. Me or Case? You. Really? Bo- that's a lot, because the boneless wings have more meat on them than actually the bone-in wings. I 65. Can, I'm glad your I, confidence in me is nice. I like it. Yeah, I'm very confident in you. That's what, that's what we're going to call it. It's <laughs> okay. confidence. Here's the thing. If Brian can eat 30 
if I'm allowed to take my shirt off in the restaurant, I think I could get to 40. Hmm. Because you have to factor in at around 20 wings, regardless of temperature, your body is going to start sweating. Your body's not used to having that amount of pressure Hmm. and that amount of food in your system. You're going to start sweating. But if I can... Can we just put a fan up? No. Yeah, we can put a fan up. I have to get naked in Buffalo Wild Wings. (laughs) If I can do that, I can get to 40. God. I I fully 100% believe that in my heart of hearts. You can't Hmm. even pee in a public bathroom. You're getting naked in Buffalo Wild Wings? (laughs) (laughs) Well, I didn't think about it that way, Kenzie. Yeah, I did. That's a good point. (laughs) Here's the thing. You also got to ignore the fries. Cause just get the chicken. If you're, you're wings and fries, unlimited all you can eat. If well, you, that's where they're gonna get you. They're gonna make their money back if you get full. Yeah. Because potatoes are filling. If you eat one serving of fries, you're eating about just 15 probably wings at most. That's it's all you're gonna get. It's gonna take a lot of space. Yeah. They're really gonna try to slap you in the face with the fries. And their right. fries are good too. There. See, look, you already failed. I've, I've you're already. Fat ass. You couldn't <laughs> even. You just said it was a bad idea, and then you're like, "Well, some fries cut is that good." <laughs> You just talk your own self out of your idea. God. I mean, I want, I want to also mix up the flavors. I want garlic palm, parm to start. Can you mix up the flavors? I don't know. That's I, what, I bet you can. Yeah. The Buffalo Wild Wings, very generous restaurant. They, I, in my experiences, they will listen to you and the things you ask for. Huh. Well, there you go. I've only had good experiences there. Some of the happiest nights of my life. Wow. I, haven't, I haven't been to one in a while, so Me I'm ready either. to go. Do you remember the cha- Do they still have the challenge? What's the challenge? The challenge used to be like the really, really hot, like their ultimate wings. You have to eat it in like a few minutes hmm. without drinking. Do you remember that when Buffalo Wild Wings first came out, they had a hot wing eating challenge? The Blazing challenge. challenge? Yes. Okay. What are the rules? Uh, <laughs> you obviously just looked it up. I just looked it up. The Blazing Challenge rules. Uh, it's a lot of rules. Um, so, challenge. Well, how about you name one of them? Well, it's, there's all this legal verbiage in here. <laughs> I, I can't even like get to the challenge. Die eating. Yeah. Okay, blazing. I'll look it up. Yeah, maybe you can read better than I can because it just it's all this legal stuff first about like blazing yeah, if you die, we're not responsible. Does okay, it really the say blazing, that? The blazing challenge at Buffalo Wild Wings requires participants to eat 10 blazing knockout wings in five minutes or less without using any water, food, condiments, or napkins. Okay. Participants must also remove all wing meat from the bone with their mouth only, hmm. and they cannot vomit or regurgitate during the challenge. <laughs> Bathroom breaks are not permitted. Okay. I remember that challenge. It was like a huge thing when I was in high school. Like, anytime you went with a group of friends, someone would do the blazing challenge. Case would actually die. And what's the prize? I don't know. I think they're just, like, free. Oh, no, no. The prize consists of a 1,000 blazing rewards points. And the winner's name on select TV screens at varying times throughout the day of <laughs> Buffalo Wild Wings internal network. Why well, you have to pay for the wings still, huh? And you get, uh, it's, so you're on the Blazing Challenge Wall of Fame on their page, too. Wow. And. What an honor. <laughs> well, my parents would be so proud. Well, I don't know what the thousand Blazing Rewards points get you. Maybe that gets you a whole bunch of new wings and stuff. I, I don't think know. it gets you merch. They sell merch. Okay. Yeah, so it gets you merch. Five hmm. minutes, no drinks, no excuse. Yeah. Here's buffalowildwings.com. Take the challenge. Ten wings, five minutes, no drinks, no excuses. I like it. Case would have so many excuses if he did this. Just so you know, Case like Case is like a pile of excuses. Well, he gets he gets hot and sweaty like looking at him. He, he like hot things like well, he looks at a jalapeno and he starts sweating out and turns red. I know, he gets, he gets all hyper talking about it. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, la- I was telling Kenzie this earlier. Last week at Subway, I went and I got uh, sriracha on my sandwich, and I thought it was going to kill me. I felt my throat mm. closing up at home. I thought I was going to die alone <laughs> by eating a Subway sandwich. It was the hottest <laughs> thing I've ever had. It was awful. Oh, boy. Uh, Shane said he tried that in college, That what you're talking about, Kenzie, yes. the challenge, and he only got to the third wing, and that was it. Oh, my God. Oh, no. What? Do they still have it? Can we... I feel like you've never gone to a Buffalo Wild Wings. It's been years. It's been a minute. And to see someone do the challenge, they like ring a bell and stuff. I used to love going to the one on Lincoln that was like a bar. It was like an old school. That was when it was called still BW3, or BW3 Buffalo Wild Wings and Weck. That's what it used to be called. What? What was yeah. the Weck? Weck What's is, Weck mean? Weck is a meat. It's a spicy meat that in Buffalo with the wings where they started, they also had Weck, and it's like on a sandwich. So you put this spicy meat on a sandwich. It was called Buffalo Wild Wings and Weck? Well, it was called BW3, and then it, that's what it stood for. And then they figured that people didn't really understand BW3, so they just went with Buffalo Wild Wings because people know what wings are oh and God. not Weck, which we just made clear here right now. Wow. No one knows what Weck is. Obviously. It must not have sold a lot of Weck either. 
I, I wouldn't order that. That sounds terrifying. Uh, the Weck is the original title refers to the beef on Weck sandwich at served at the restaurant. And yeah. Okay. Well, I think that Brian should have to do the Blazing Challenge and Case. Uh, I, I would do it. I'm in. You case? Case. I, I'm sorry. I just got a, a breaking news phone call we'll talk about after the commercial break here. What was the question? Are you, I want you to do the Blazing Challenge. Oh, no, it'll kill me. I would like to live a long life. But it would be kind of funny. I don't know. Yeah. I don't think it would. What's the breaking news thing? <laughs> There's a SWAT standoff at the Elmhurst Portillo's right now. What? Whoa. Who I know. called you, SWAT? No. <laughs> Actually, Devil <laughs> Features Mike called me to tell me. Is he there? No. He lives in Indiana. He's, like, he's trying to get his cake shake. God. I don't, don't yell at me. I just found out. I haven't Googled it yet. Okay, well, we'll, we'll check sure on it. Real. What if he just prank called you and you said it on the radio? No, it is. I'm looking at new, uh, WGN just reported now it, too. Now we're going to get the fakest calls <laughs> that we say on the radio all the time. It's real. WGN just reported it. Okay, oh well, be, well, I hope everybody's okay. Be careful. Um, I don't know what to do, but that's terrible. Oh. I know. Sorry. I'm no, sorry. I'm in here with a blazing challenge info. Well, yeah. Well, now. Yeah. Now, now there's a totally different challenge at Portillo's. That's right. Terrible. Oh. The Brian and Kenzie Show. On Q101. The Brian and Kenzie Show. On Q101. It's Brian and Kenzie on Q101. And coming up, we'll have our takeaways here in just a few minutes. And, of course, another chance at the Wimmer Young Festival coming up at 11 with Lauren when she comes in. And I just want to take a moment of the show right now as we get near the end of it. I thought about it during the show, if I'd bring it up or not, because I get emotional about it. I'm going to try to get through it. But I wanted to thank the listeners because there are already a lot of them today that have reached out to me with DMs. Uh, Today is the two-year anniversary of my dad passing away. And I make a lot of jokes on the air about my dad, about how tough he was. And all those are true, by the way. All that's... He's just the best. <laughs> He's I wish my you... favorite person. I wish you could have met him, Kenzie, because everything I talk about, that toughness was, you know, true. However, he also was a guy that I wouldn't be here without him today, the sacrifice that he made for me and all my brothers and helped guide us. Like when I went to him about radio and you think a guy like that, an old school tough guy, he didn't laugh. Well, he did laugh a little bit (laughs) because he wasn't sure if he could make a living doing it. Like he was like, can you eat? I go, I don't know. We'll see. And he goes, well, you can always go to law school then later, but your grades probably aren't good enough for that. But... He, uh, you know, he encouraged it. He said, well, go give it a shot. Get out there and do it. And then if you fail, who cares? He tried it. And, you know, here I am now many, many years later uh, doing it. And all my brothers sought what they wanted to do, and they did it. And the sacrifice he made, he never cared about his own success or what he did. He cared about all of us, what we did, and wanting to hear about it. Like, I taught him so much about radio and how it works, and he wanted to hear every time I talked to him. So I wanted to bring it up because it also is – Uh, Mental Health Month, we're getting near an end of it in May. And I can tell you that two years ago, I was a wreck, and Case was hearing that and saw saw what was going on. And I remember a couple days after the funeral kind of saying, I guess I got to figure something else out to do for a living because I don't know how I'm going to laugh again, like goof off on the air. Like, I really did feel that way. Like, I felt like I can't just be like we're goofy, what we did today, a lot of great fun stuff. Right. And it was weird for a while, and then you get through it. And just the people out there that have, especially the people that have lost a parent who I hear from all the time, and then people that tragically might lose a son or a daughter Mm -hmm. or a sibling or whatever. You had some loss, and I know you feel like you can't get through it because that's how I felt. I felt like changing careers two years ago. And it is, time does, it's cliche, but time heals things, and your friends and people. I'll tell you one thing, music helps too, a lot. And just talking about it with someone gets through. So I, anybody out there struggling with anything, I tell you, please talk to people about it and people you, your friends or whatever. If you don't have anybody, call 988, that number, if you're struggling with something, because it took me a long time to get through it. And I will say this, you never get over it. Right. But you get through it somehow. You can. And it's been two years now. And I, you know, I think about him every day. Some days it's every minute of every day still. Mm-hmm. When I leave here or even during the show, I think about him at certain points, but um, the listeners here, man, you guys really got me through it from all of your reaching out and th- at that time and even now today. I've gotten some this morning, some DMs where I can't believe that some listeners actually remember when my dad passed away. Well, honestly, in a weird way, this show really keeps a lot of your dad's spirit alive because of Done. all the stories yeah, yeah. and everything <clears throat> you share. He's almost like a character in this show. <laughs> yeah. I mean, 
the th- he's making me laugh still. Like your dad makes me laugh more yeah. than you do, Brian. He's <laughs> so <laughs> funny and he's yeah. so great. He's still what I love is that this this show allows like um your dad to still bring people joy, which I think is just really cool. Yeah. Cause he he re- I didn't get to meet him, but he brings me so much <laughs> joy. I think he's just so badass and I know so many people love him and still taking his lessons, still here, he's still, yeah. still making people laugh. And I I love that um we almost still have his presence because of it, which is cool. So I'm so thank you for being willing to talk about him and stuff. I know that that's really hard. Yeah. Um, you know, not everyone works in media, obviously. They Correct. can relate to the pain and the struggles. It can be really hard to take something that personal. Uh, yes. Because you don't necessarily know once you get in the midst of it how you're going to respond and you're live and do you want to open that door because there's usually some jerk that has something to say too. So <laughs> you don't always want to open the door to something that you care about so much. But uh, even though some of that stuff happens sometimes, so many people benefit because you're willing to talk about him yeah. and share it and we get to know you better and we get to know him still. And some of my favorite things you tell me are these stories with your dad. So I, I'm very grateful that you're willing to share it. Well, that was really nice. That's really special. And he would hate that I'm talking about him right now. <laughs> I, I, know he's, I know he's watching. I know he's above and all that. And I, But I know he'd hate this because he didn't want attention, even though he was you know, an elite athlete for Ohio State football. And he, he never talked about that. He never – if you asked him if he played football, he'd say, no, I didn't play sports. And he was, he was a scholarship athlete. He won Ohio State because he didn't want – he thinks things in the past were, like, over. He was done with it. And he right. wanted to move on forward. And, yeah, it's – it's incredible. So thank you for saying those words. I, I got through it, I think, a little emotional. You but, know you did awesome. Well, and I also appreciate, like I said, I, I want to pass that message on that I was a mess two years ago and even a year ago on the first year anniversary. And everybody said, once you get through that first year, it does get better. And it, it did. I'll never forget it. I'll never get over it. But things can get better. And uh, just reach out and talk to somebody if you can, because that's what I did. I talked to you guys <laughs> every day. Uh, so thank you for letting me share that. It's Brian and Kenzie on Q101. The Brian and Kenzie Show on Q101.